Hey everybody, I'm John. This is a Midnight Paint and Body YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the door pins and bushings in a GM truck. So you've all seen it on these trucks when the door starts to sag, typically the driver's door because it's obviously the most used. And just to show you how incredibly common these are, now I'm going to be putting pins and bushings in this truck and I'm actually going to be replacing the fuel door. Last week, I put pins and bushings in that truck and replaced the fuel door. Along with a little bit of other stuff, but it just shows you how that's a super common thing on these. So, the first most basic way to tell if your door pins are worn out, obviously you're going to know it's going to start not hitting proper on the latch. If you just grab the bottom of your door, if you've got play in it at all, if they're worn. As you can see, these ones are really bad. There's an awful lot of play in this door. So we're going to be replacing those and then typically you'll always see they start hitting this back door so it'll start chipping away at that edge a little bit and on this one it's actually started hitting the rocker a bit and caused a little bit of rust to start there which actually incidentally I put rockers and cab corners on this truck I don't even know three four years ago or something like that so another really nice clean pickup truck so there's a couple of different styles of these pins and bushing kits. Now, what you get in them is your door pins, the bushing that goes in the hinge. Now this style, they'll kind of go into the hinge and then it's got this C-clip that holds it in. The other style is these ones. Same idea, goes in, but these actually bolt in. I prefer this style, I just feel like they fit tighter. So this is what we're gonna be using. I just always have a bunch of these in stock because like I say, they're such a common thing. So our first step is gonna to be to get this driver's door off the truck. So I'll get set up here and I'll show you guys what's involved in pulling the door off. Now I'm not sure, I just, Thought I just recorded all this, but I think my camera was off. So I'll give you a rundown of what I just thought I completely recorded to show you guys how this stuff works. So our door, so you can see our door harness. Well, I've got it pinched underneath the door there, but. So that feeds in through here. It kind of wraps up around and it plugs into the fuse box. So they're pretty easy. You just need to undo that plug and just kind of feed that wiring down and through. And then once you have got these three bolts out, there's one bolt on the stopper, one bolt on each hinge. You pull those out and then the door just lifts straight up and off. So they're pretty easy. So we're gonna move on to our hinge. So now you can see there's a ton of wear in this one. Actually, that bottom one is wore out as well, so we're going to be doing both. Yeah, look at how much movement's in those. And actually, I can see that these have been done before. These are not factory pins. This has got the style with the C-clip. So I'm going to pop those off, and we'll get to putting our new ones in. C-clips. So here's the part that really wears out in these. So our bushings, you can see the tops are completely gone off of these. So those are just wasted. There's what's left of our bushing. And 
So I should have mentioned too, this might not be the best truck to be doing this on actually. That truck when I did it last week would have been better because it had the factory pins in it. Now if it still has the factory pins, they don't have that C-clip. You actually need to take a grinder and cut the bottom off because they're like mushroomed in from the factory. So you're just going to take your grinder and just nip that bottom of the pin off without cutting into the hinge. And then these you usually need to take a punch and kind of tap them out because they're they're pressed in there pretty good. But that's uh, that's how you need to do them if they're still the factory pins. So next we put our new bushings in. Retainer piece is going to go back in there. So before I stick the new pins in, I usually coat these with some anti-seize. Now when you put your new pins in, there's two sizes. There's a longer one and a shorter one. Longer one always goes on the top. So now you can see, no more play in that hinge. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom one. Uh, I'm not gonna be putting the door on right away. I'm actually gonna clean up that little rust spot, put some paint on it first. But I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to throw it back together. Well, maybe I should have started this video on the passenger side of the truck, but I was just getting ready to do this side. And I thought I'd bring you guys in and show you what I was talking about here. So you can see. This hinge also has a lot of play in it. But you can see this is a factory door pin. And you can see the way it's mushroomed over on the end. So on this side, I'm going to need to take a little cutoff wheel and just buzz through the bottom of that pin there. And once that bottom is cut off, you usually need to take a punch or something and hammer those through because they're they're in the hinge pretty good. They're kind of a friction fit in there as well. So, just thought I'd show you guys that so you know what the factory pins look like if that's what you end up uh, are replacing. So I'm gonna go get going on this and then uh, we're almost ready to put the door back on the other side as well. So you can see now, no play at all in those door hinges. I can't even budge that door. So there it is guys, both sides done. Everything fits nice and tight. Door is open and closed properly.
And so just keep in mind, I have had people say, oh, their hinges are out of alignment. It's always the pins and bushings. There is no alignment in these hinges. These are welded to the body and welded to the door. They're, uh, they are what they are. The only alignment is to actually bend things into shape. Um, there is a bit of alignment on your striker, but you shouldn't have to touch that. I know some guys will try and adjust that when their pins get worn out, and then that just throws everything way out of whack. But, uh, there you go, not a big thing. Just figured that might help somebody out if you need to do those pins and bushings. They are available at any auto parts store. They're uh, it's a common wear item, so pretty much any parts store should carry them. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. They range in price. I think the Dorman ones, which are good quality, are around 30 bucks a set, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong, depending where you are and what you're paying for parts. But as always, guys, I hope it helps. I appreciate you watching. Hope you come and check out the next video.